If you had told me 10 years ago that I was going to build my own home from scratch with no experience, I would have been shocked beyond belief. But here I am way in over my head and I want to give you a tour of everything that I've done over the last two years. But instead of just showing you what I've built, I want to share the journey with you and my heart and the intentions behind each build and project. Seven years ago, I became a stay-at-home mom, and this led me into researching so much about the food and the products that I bring into my home, which led me into starting my first permaculture garden. I loved it so much that I turned my 10th of an acre property that had a house, a driveway, and a garage on it into a backyard garden oasis where I grew so much food and grew food even on my neighbor's properties. But one tenth of an acre wasn't enough to be able to grow as much food as I wanted to, to have a greenhouse, to have chickens and goats and pigs potentially. So for years, I sat on this idea of being able to buy more land and I didn't know how we were gonna make it work because we were low income and a single income household, but I was determined. So I wrote a letter, a five-year vision of what I wanted my life to look like. It detailed me sitting on my back deck overlooking a massive garden oasis on an acreage, being able to not worry about paying bills and being able to bring in our own food. I wanted financial freedom, food freedom, and land freedom. When the housing market went crazy in 2021, we sold our home, moved into a trailer, and started our search for land. It took us five months to find this lot of 18 acres of raw land. We got an amazing deal on it because nobody wanted land with wetlands on it, but I had a vision. After choosing from about four different locations on where we actually wanted to build on this 18 acres, we started on the driveway. And I brought Craig in for this because I had no clue what I was doing and I was terrified of chainsaws. He would cut down a tree and I would start moving the brush into piles. And as that week went on, I realized, oh my goodness, Craig has so much work to do. And so I actually decided to pick up a chainsaw. And this was huge for me because I grew up knowing chainsaws and tree felling is super dangerous. It's actually how my biological father passed away when I was only seven months old. That week I used a chainsaw for the first time. I cleared one to two inch trees. That's it. And I used an excavator for the first time that week as well. And it really empowered me. I'm so thankful my stepdad Craig stepped in and helped me build this driveway or mainly built the driveway by himself because without him, I wouldn't have had the confidence to use a chainsaw or an excavator to begin with. For Christmas, my in-laws all went in and bought me a chainsaw and I was literally only going to be clearing small trees, little brush, and I was actually going to have someone come in and clear all the big trees to have wood for their own homestead, but they canceled on me. And by that time, I was already starting to cut even bigger trees and move my way up to the point where I really just fell in love with tree felling and I ended up clearing probably 80 or 90% of these trees with this small chainsaw. So I started with like literally one to two inch trees and worked my way up to three foot trees with a little bit of a bigger chainsaw. And it was honestly one of the most empowering things I've ever done. But also looking back, really terrifying that I did that on my own, but I loved it. <laughs> So the driveway, the tree felling, and so many other things like bringing in electricity, putting in a septic bed, and even starting the foundation was all done in the land development phase in year one. This completely laid the foundation of being able to move here, which we really wanted to do earlier, but there was one missing piece. And that missing piece was water. We tried finding an area where we could hit a spring and have a dug well to try to save thousands of dollars but we kept hitting bedrock as much as I would love to save the 20 grand we're gonna have to go with a drilled well so I had to hire this out we ended up getting a drilled well and in the last two years drilled wells have gone from an average of $15,000 to $30,000 to guarantee water and that's just insane but we ended up drilling by foot and getting a really good deal by hitting very clean and clear water at 40 and 50 feet we have 25 gallons of minute which is absolutely incredible and in 
order to save myself $3,000, I actually installed my own well pump. Installing the well pump on my own was super empowering, especially when so many things in the build were going wrong during that time, like the windows not fitting. And getting fresh water here is what allowed us to move here. And I've absolutely loved living here. The only thing that has been able to make this whole project doable is this trailer. We've been living in it for two and a half years in order to be able to afford building our home from scratch. Trailer living isn't necessarily perfect, but it is doable. And we insulate the bottom of our trailer to ensure our pipes don't freeze. And our trailer has a furnace and we have backup heat as well. This place has really been the escape that we needed. And although it's not a huge home to live in it works for us we eat dinner kind of at the table and on the couch we watch movies here I literally edit my videos with my cat normally <laughs> right here on my lap and this is like the place that we come to relax speaking of relaxing I love laying right here and playing the free phone game June's journey which is the sponsorship of today's video this game reminds me of my childhood because I used to look for hidden objects in these spy books but this is even cooler because every time I revisit a scene it's asking me to find different objects or there's new objects to find and each new scene takes you through a story of a murder mystery. As I play each scene, I'm getting gifts and rewards like building materials to be able to renovate my mansion and grow my island. Bricks, hammer, and coin. You guys know I love me some land development. Each new scene takes you on a journey of a murder mystery that June is trying to solve. So not only is it a really cool game because you're looking for hidden objects, it's super relaxing and I don't feel like a zombie when I play it. I feel like I'm engaging my brain because I'm looking for things and solving a mystery. <laughs> Perfect score. To play this fun, relaxing, and engaging game, click the link in my description or scan the QR code. Thanks for watching my sponsorships because they help me create free content for you guys. So let's get back to the tour. Having 18 acres of land provides us with a very cool opportunity to be a little bit more self-sufficient. We're not fully off grid, but all of the trees that I dropped over the last few years, we're actually gonna be using to heat our home. And our land is actually quite the large mixture of hardwood and softwood. So instead of just having a wood stove inside of our house, I decided to go with in-floor heating with our outdoor wood boiler. This wood boiler burns both hardwood and softwood. The way it works is that you basically start a huge fire in here and there's basically like a double wall here and the fire heats up glycol all the way around the wood boiler and a pump sends that heated glycol to our maintenance room through our in-floor heating and it also heats our hot water for our showers and our dishes and our laundry and it's really an awesome opportunity to stay active and fit by bucking and splitting wood over the years as long as my back holds up now originally when we sold our home and decided to buy land my intention was to be able to do it as debt-free as as possible, which may have meant living in a different structure like a yurt or a shipping container or a closet hut. And as I did more research, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right to spend a bunch of money on a temporary structure like a yurt. I looked into shipping container homes and they end up costing more money with less space and less efficiency than a regular framed home. So I decided to research how to frame a home and felt like it was way in over my head and even got quotes to hire the framing portion out and the framing quotes came in around $30,000 just in labor and I thought you know what I've got to give this a shot and that brought me to my first framing project ever this shed I watched the Perkins Builder Brothers on how to frame and had Craig come in here and there to be able to help me put the walls up and to help put the roof on and oh my gosh it was such a learning curve I was so shaky on the ladder and the mini scaffolding we created and it's not perfect nor is it even finished and it's very messy. But it gave me the confidence to be able to at least try to frame my home from scratch.
honestly, nothing fully prepared me for the build of this home. Once the snow melted, I went hard and I did not stop. I framed out the form boards for the foundation. I did the insulation, the vapor barrier, the rebar and the mesh, and I did the in-floor heating. It was a ton of work and I ended up hiring out the actual concrete pour a day, which is one of the maybe three trades that I've hired out in this whole build so far. It didn't necessarily go to plan. One of my form boards did bow and I did try to fix it with a concrete saw, which was very controversial, but I like the way it turned out. And overall, I saved a ton of money being able to, you know, form it and do some of the work by myself. And then I moved on to framing. I built the walls one by one and on top of each other so that I could get a bunch of people together and raise the exterior of my walls in one day. It took me three weeks to build most of the exterior walls. I sheeted most of them on the ground to square them up before we raised the walls, which I highly recommend. And on the wall raising day, over 20 of my friends and family showed up. It was so insane. And we got these walls up so quickly, built two more walls that day and raised them and then started moving on to the sketchiest part of the build, the LVL beam that holds up the roof rafters for my cathedral ceiling. So I just checked it because I was really curious and if you're checking it, we are a quarter of an inch out. So that means when we set up the batter boards initially, we had it bang on and your all your cuts and measurements <laughs> make it bang on. Quarter inch, but that's an eighth because you have to cut it in half. We're out the eighth of an inch. <laughs> Square. So that means we're really not out because it's we're, rough we're carpentry. We, That's how good we, we did. We did it good. <laughs> Then we finished up putting the OSB up. Craig came and helped me for this. I finished framing the interior walls and one by one, I raised them up either by myself or with Craig or with Cam. And eventually we were ready to get started on putting the roof rafters and the trusses up, which is where I ran into one of my biggest and most silliest mistakes not putting sill gasket underneath my interior walls. For whatever reason, I thought sill gasket only needed to go underneath exterior walls because I thought, oh, well maybe moisture gets around the exterior walls sometime, but I didn't expect the interior walls to need it. But they did because concrete is always wicking up moisture and concrete never fully, fully dries. So the wood that's on the concrete is going to rot very quickly. <laughs> My neighbor, Brian, came and helped me for the truss install. He ended up jacking up all the interior walls, getting that sill gasket under there and getting ready for the trusses to be installed the very next day. I was still very much afraid of heights at this point. So Brian and his employee put up the trusses and and on the next day, I was able to actually get up there with Brian and put the trusses up the cathedral ceiling roof, which was really cool to be able to be involved in some of the truss install. At this point, I was really starting to feel the stress levels of rain pouring into my house and not having my home fully closed in. So I started doing plywood. I actually plywooded most of my roof by myself by using tricks like putting it up on the scaffolding and then pushing it up onto the roof and having blocking there to stop the plywood plywood from falling. My hubby helped me with the 12-12 pitch, but as a lot of you guys know, my husband does work full time. So it was really hard to get help for this portion. And I did want to pay someone and work with someone, but it's really hard to find people in the trades <laughs> in my area. Everyone is so busy and most people are booked months, if not a year in advance, especially for framing. Once that was on, I started working on the ice and water shield to fully waterproof our roof. It has a butyl lining, so our entire roof is covered in this butyl, and that way every screw that goes into the roof gets wrapped with the butyl, and it's less likely to leak because steel roofs do sweat. Okay, rope, got one job. Oh, I feel like I'm gonna fall. This is worse than I thought it would be. Ah! Oh my God, my calves are burning. I don't know if I can do this. That took me 
three weeks to do by myself, which was insane. And it's one of those things that I kind of wish that I just hired the whole roof out, but it was also incredible to get the experience of doing the roof. But as soon as I got the ice and water shield on, I moved on immediately to getting the windows and the doors in. The windows and doors wiped me emotionally because so much went wrong with things not fitting. And it really taught me a lot about the trades to not trust anyone <laughs> to triple check your quotes to your plans to know what you're buying and to know that you're always gonna have to take the blame for whatever you order it is the wrong size so I don't know what to do it doesn't matter if the architect drew the plans and order the windows and they did not match it is still your fault. I was heartbroken when my main kitchen window didn't fit and I was so angry when my sliding doors and my front door didn't fit. What are we going on? Don't know. It's too tall. Wow. Do you want to run inside quickly? I, I got it. I can't believe this. The door is not fitting but I got everything reframed and all closed in and it was a very triumphant feeling until the next thing went wrong, which was the metal panels for the roof. Now you may have been thinking, why didn't I learn my lesson with the windows and go up and triple check and make sure my quote was right, but I actually ordered my roof before I realized my doors and my one window didn't fit. So I didn't quite learn that lesson yet. My roofing panels ended up being 15 inches too short it doesn't fit i don't know how this keeps happening and yes they were based off of my plans never base anything off of your plans is what i'm learning and always go up and measure literally everything i ended up getting the correct panels in and the roof on and i do have a ton of roofing panels left over that i'm gonna have to use on future projects like the chicken coop my husband's office spunky in the woods and potentially even an outbuilding or a granny suite somewhere on this property by the end of 2023 the end of my second year of this build i was feeling absolutely absolutely burnt out. Not calling it a quits, but my body was quitting on me and I realized I really needed to take some time off. Now that the home is closed in and we're committed to our third winter in the trailer, it doesn't feel like there's this intense stress of a rush to get into our home this winter because that's clearly not happening. There's still so much left to do, especially getting this slab heated is one of my main priorities but I'm learning to take it a little bit more slow and to enjoy the process and to even just share my heart and intention in all of this as I go along. And as promised, here's a home tour. Here's the front entrance. We've got a stone installed. And here's our house. We'll have a little table here and a bench with like storage up above. The maintenance room, still quite the work in progress. The boiler for the in-floor heating, I'm hoping to go on this wall and to have the hot water tank here. HRV on the wall, pressure tank for the water and some sort of filtration system on the wall. And I'm hoping this entire side will be able to be storage. And of course, we've got the electrical system coming in on this side. And this is the entrance into our kitchen and our living room. I'm so happy with this room. I know not everyone loves a great open room, but I think it's perfect for smaller homes. Here's the kitchen. It's going to be an L shape with lower cabinetry and shelves for the uppers right beside the feature window. This side's gonna be a fridge and an oven with a range hood. And instead of going with an island smack dab in the middle, we decided that we wanna go with just a typical kitchen table. This suits our needs a little bit better with having a young one and being able to sit with our feet planted on the ground. So the table will be right in the middle here and it'll still be great for meal prep and for hosting. And this right here is going to be our pantry. I'm really hoping to be able to install cabinetry and instead of just a regular door. I think this will really class up the place and really tie into the kitchen. So the table will be here and you'll walk directly into the living room and this is the view. The couch is gonna be right here and we'll be able to watch the TV on this wall and we're gonna do lower cabinetry here. This is actually just gonna get fill framed. I've changed my mind on what I originally wanted to do here. And you can walk out on either door here out onto the deck. The deck is gonna span 
from this side of the house to this side of the house and come out to about here. I've always loved having an indoor and outdoor entertainment space and to be able to relax and to overlook the garden oasis that will eventually be here. This right here is the master bedroom. We've got a lot going on in here right now, but eventually it'll be a bed right here against this wall with this as our view when we wake up in the morning. And then we're gonna have cabinetry along this wall for a closet. And here's the master ensuite with a toilet, a sink, and then this side of the room is going to be the bathtub on this side and then a shower right beside it. It's gonna be a whole wet room so that when you splash water out of the tub, it just goes down the shower drain. Coming over to this side, we have two bedrooms and a bathroom. This is the guest bathroom, and this is going to be a shower, a washer and dryer combo unit with storage above, a toilet and a sink. All of the bedrooms are going to have cabinetry instead of closets to save a little bit of space, but I also find they just look really classy and I'm so excited to do my daughter's room. It's gonna be a loft bed. And for the office, I'm really hoping to be able to have a Murphy bed so that we can have guests over with storage on either side of it for the office. And it will be designated as a bedroom with a fire alarm in it, but our purpose for it is going to be an office. So there we have have it home sweet home i cannot wait to get in here hopefully next winter there's still a ton to do but it is what it is it'll all be worth it at the end of the day especially when we get to overlook this beautiful view this journey has taught me so much. It's taught me that I can do anything I put my mind to, but at the same time, it's also taught me that I'm not invincible. <laughs> it's taught me to take a look at the project as a whole and not just like rush and only think about the project you're working on at that exact moment. This build has taught me how important the trades are as our world becomes more and more automated. And it's taught me that self-sufficiency isn't just about being able to grow your own food or heat your home with your own wood. Self-sufficiency is also knowing how your home works and to be able to repair things on your home without having to pay thousands of dollars in labor. I'm not gonna lie, my life isn't perfect. This has been a very hard, but also fruitful journey for our family. And I've been able to create this incredible community, both in person in my area with people being willing to help me out and also you online. It's been so incredible to be able to share this journey with you, to show my mistakes and my failures, or as you guys like to call it, my education costs and my learning experiences. You make me feel less alone. And thank you so much for being here because it actually helps me pay for this build. And and I am so mind blown that you can go on social media and make an income. So thank you. <laughs> that is so much on you guys being here, following, subscribing, commenting. It literally has helped me pay for so much of this. I think it's so cool looking back on that five-year plan, that five-year vision of what I wanted my life to look like. And although I'm not fully there yet, looking over my garden oasis and having my full home set up and running, I'm so thankful I wrote that plan. And I think it's so important that people have a goal or a vision of what they want their life to look like, a dream of some sort. And I kind of wanted to share what my dream looks like for the next 10 years obviously finishing up my home and having a functioning homestead I don't know how much I want to share I've really enjoyed developing land and building and my family doesn't want to do this again where we live in a trailer and we build a home and you know kind of displace ourselves for years again but I would absolutely love to keep building which brought me to this idea of being able to potentially buy more land develop more land and build tiny home communities and I think it would be an incredible way to help local people out in my area who are experiencing homelessness, who are experiencing abusive and controlling relationships and needing a fresh start. And what's so cool about YouTube is there's no glass ceiling and there's so many different brands willing to partner. And if I can continue to just grow this channel up and to continue working with incredible brands, I think that they'd be willing to, you know, help with the materials and make these homes less expensive for people to be able to get on their feet. So that's kind of what I see my life as in the next 10, 15 years, if I have the extra income, if I have the extra wealth, that is a really big goal of mine. So thank you for being here because the more people who kind of follow along, the more I'm going to be able to make something like that possible. So thank you. <laughs>
I don't know if that was too much. <laughs> I hope that I can make that happen. I really do. Happy 2024, you guys. I will see you next week where I'm getting back into the build. And thank you for being patient with me in my much needed rest and break. I will see you next week. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And just a reminder, today's sponsorship was June's Journey. It's a free mystery phone game. So check it out linked in my description. And with that, I will see you next week.